And now finally on our current section with regards to basic color correction and grading, we're going to look at color wheels. And I'll be honest, I don't really use the color wheels that often. And that's because I have a lot of correction here in my input LUT. And also I set white balance well in camera while I'm shooting. However, sometimes you want a different look and sometimes you really need to correct bad footage. It doesn't necessarily have to be bad footage. You, as I said, you can just want a certain look, um, but this can really help with bad footage as well. But let's, let's, let's start with good footage. I'm not just saying that because I shot it, uh, but just like we had basic correction and creative and curves, we're going to go to color wheels and match. And I'm going to leave on what we've already done with the curves. We're going to build on top of that. And what we're going to do is we're going to select color wheels and match. Now match is, I don't use it that much. I really don't use it that much. Um, but color match very briefly is uh, where you match one clip to another. And that's say you bring in a clip that you want to emulate. That's how you would do it. You, you would come into color wheels and match and go to comparison view. All of a sudden you've got side by side and this is the current as in what's selected. I could select that and go to here and that's what we'd be selecting uh, and working on, but we're not, we're working on this. You see how current is changing. Uh, so that's where our playhead is. But what we're looking for is a reference. Now this is black and why is that? Well, that's, that's because this is reading from the rest of our sequence and the playhead is right at the beginning. So let's drag it through and all of a sudden you see, okay, so we're looking through where we were at before. Okay. So let's say this has the colors right here that I want to emulate. I don't, but this is how you would, you would do it. If it was a shot of people, you'd leave face detection turned on because the exposure and the colors of someone's face is most important, but there's no face here. So let's turn off face detection and say, that's our reference. And we want to apply that color science. It very rarely works by the way, uh, but sometimes it's the only option you've got to get started uh, on a correction. Um, but let's say this is the color that we want and we want to affect this. So this is in our current and this is our reference. And if we apply match, it's done nothing because it doesn't really work. Adobe lifted this and pushed it out so much uh, in, in years gone by and it doesn't really work. Um, some people may get it to work, doesn't really work for me. Uh, just come a confirmation. Let's just toggle the color wheels and match off and on. So this is the matching of it. Turn it on again. I mean, it makes it a little bit darker, but nothing really like not at all. <laughs> so yeah, that, that does nothing, nothing at all for me. So I'm going to uh, undo, undo, keep undoing until everything goes back to normal. There you go. Uh, I just redo. This is what it affected, but it didn't really do anything for me. Um, and uh, the way to get out of comparison view is either to toggle off here, uh, which is where we, where we put our button or just click comparison view again and get rid of it. However, color wheels is something completely different in as much as it's something we can use. So we have three things here. You may have seen something similar to this. Yes, you have, because it's in creative under shadow tint and highlight tint. What we have now in the color wheels is we don't just have the shadows and the highlights, but we also have the midtones and it's, it is still effectively the tinting of these. So, Next to each wheel, you'll see a slider. Now this slider is exposure. So it's the exposure of the shadows, the exposure of the midtones, the exposure of the highlights. Well, we've already dealt with exposure of shadows and highlights before up in basic correction. We've got shadows here and we've got highlights here, but this is where we can just deep dive a little bit further. So say we wanted to bring the shadows down. Okay, cool. We can do that with this slider and you see how everything gets darker. Let's just turn on all the meteoscopes again. So, and I'll undo that just so we can see 
more confirmation. I'm going to get rid of the RGB parade just so we've got the main vector scope, uh, which is the waveform. And I'm going to bring down those shadows and you can see here everything's starting to get crushed. Good, good, good. That works as expected all the way down and it's just, yeah, it's not great, is it? So let's undo that. And I'm just going to bring them down a little bit. And the reason why I'm bringing down a little bit is because I want to affect the shadows. So I'm going to bring them down because the shadows show up more when they're a little bit darker. And remember that orange and teal we were talking about? Okay, let's try it. So let's grab this little crosshair and drag it a little bit towards orange. Good. If I turn this off and on, that's the difference that we've made. And then I'm going to do similar with the highlights. Again, I'm going to bring them down just a little bit. We're coming off the top here. Undo. You see how we're all the way up here? I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. And I'm going to drag the highlights a little bit towards the blue. Not too much. But if I undo and then redo, you'll see around here, the highlights here and the highlights here. Uh, and the highlights mainly around here. If I uh, undo and then redo, you can see that we've changed the highlights towards the blue part, but we've not affected anything else. And that's where these color wheels can really come in handy. So, okay, that's the shadows and the highlights. What do we do with the midtones? Well, let's just turn them all the way up. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> but you see what you can do. You can bring up all the midtones. This is the exposure of the midtones all the way up, but we're not really washed out. In fact, if that was the look you're going for, that's how to achieve it. Let's bring it back down down again. Now, looking at that now in comparison, and let's compare it to the original. Okay, it maybe is a little bit too dark. But if we went in here and brought up the exposure, it would bring up everything. Obviously, we wouldn't bring it up that much, but it brings up everything. So if we go back to the color wheels and just bring up the midtones, that can complement everything and can bring everything where we want it to be. Do we want to change the color? Well, let Let's see, you can always undo. Maybe we want the midtones over towards the magenta. Well, yeah, maybe we don't, or maybe you do. It's all your call. This is all a, a, a personal preference. But you see, in bringing those midtones, where we've affected is right the way through the middle here. If I undo, you see how that's just gone here. Watch this area here, which is the midtones, which this has a lot of, because it's not necessarily highlights but it's certainly not shadows either. But if I bring these midtones up, watch how this splits. Keep an eye on that. You see how all the greens and the blues are kind of going down and the reds are coming up? All the colors just separating. It's almost like they're paint and they're separating out into their different colors or they're finding different parts within the color spectrum and within the 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 exposure of those colors and they're representing in a completely different way not just on the original but as you can see on here which is why using one of the scopes is so handy because you can see in in the actual clip what's happening but you can deep dive and really see what certain colors are doing within the waveform as you affect and it can really help especially if you don't have a color correct monitor because say your monitor shows predominantly green and you are then moving things away from green because you think oh that's a very green image but actually in reality it's not this will tell you yes okay there's a lot of green here maybe i chose the wrong color as an example but this is quite a green look it's quite a green scene as it were there's a lot of green in it. But if you had an overly green cast of a of a of a screen and you thought, right, okay. I mean, it depends. You may be watching this on a on a monitor that's really quite green. Um but you can you can see on here. And if you're not looking here and you didn't have this and you're trying to get away from green, you could pull it over here and maybe that looks better to you because you've brought the midtones away from green because that's what your monitor is telling you. And that might look right to you. But if you look on here and you realize just how much blue is here, and if you're looking on a green monitor, you're not going to be seeing blue here. You're going to be seeing something as if it looks great. You can see here that it's not. It's kind of like 
a, a pilot who is flying in complete mist and fog and he's using or he or she is using their instruments to show them the reality show them their global position show them their altitude and their and their speed that's what you're doing here you're using the tools within premier to confirm what you're seeing and you would always trust this over this always trust this over this because on your monitor maybe blues show more green well you can still see that some color is wrong and if you if you weren't certain that that was real blue you could right click and go to your parade and you know that it goes red green blue rgb and you can confirm okay that is that yeah and it's far too much so we need to kind of back out of that a little bit in fact quite a bit let's bring it back towards the center and all of a sudden this desaturates a little and this comes more not not down but closer to the other colors because what we're trying to avoid especially when we're trying to show something almost as a as a as an accurate representation we don't want one color to overpower when in the picture no not one color overpowers does that make sense i think it does <laughs> You may have got, you may have realized by now, I doubt myself a little, but you should always, I, I, don't, I know I come across as doubting. I don't doubt myself. I question myself because that's what you're doing in, in, in production of a video as well. You're questioning, you're looking at an edit and thinking, is this the best it can be? Is this the best representation? Is it the be is this the best way of showing uh, is this the best way that my footage is uh, emulating the music? Well, I can be absolutely certain after questioning myself a couple of times, if I come back here and I forget, I mean, forget about how bad the footage is going to look color wise now, but I know that this bit here, or it is my favorite bit, but I know that this section right here is the best representation of that music. Open flames and a good char on the food being served. I know that, but the amount of times that I questioned myself until I got to that point, you should always be questioning. And with color, oh, that's just, personally, I, I love the color of that now. I think it just looks, I think it looks lovely. However, I have now noticed something that I'm not happy with, so I'm going to go and change it. And that is, this is supposed to be grey. And while I don't really mind it, I don't like the fact that it looks a little bit magenta. So how do I change that? Well, we go into curves, remember? And we want to go to hue versus hue, exactly. We don't want to go to hue versus saturation because I don't want to take out the saturation. But then again, do I? Because it's supposed to be grey. So maybe that would be the easiest way to get rid of it. Well, let's try hue versus hue first. See how it is, it's, it's blowing, it's towards, towards the purple. Let's see how that affects that. If I pull that down, why do I want to take it? Well, that's the problem. I don't want to take it anyway. I don't want to turn it to a different color because it's supposed to be gray. So that's why I want hue versus saturation. And I'm going to color pick uh, this area because it's a bit darker. Uh, and that's showing as blue now. Okay, maybe not. Maybe let's pick it over here. Okay, that is showing blue. So maybe my eyes are a bit off. Again, I have a 100% color correct monitor, but maybe my eyes are off because I've been staring at this for so long. And that highlights what I was saying before. You need to take some time away. You need to step away or at least get someone else to bring their eyes. And you can say, listen, does that look a little bit magenta? But then you've got to be careful of the power of suggestion. So then rather than, than dialing in the color with your question, you say, what color does that look like? Now, what I want it to look like is a kind of gray, which gray sits in, gray can sit in the, in the, uh, in the area of blue. If you think of battleship gray, it's, it is a hue of blue. It's like a dark desaturated blue. Not all gray, but this kind of gray is. And Lemetri is telling me that that's what this is. So, okay, I will take my in, uh, my instruments as at their word and say, well, if you're telling me that that looks gray, 
or bluey, well, that's the color I want it to be. So, okay, I will rest assured that that's what that color is. But always come back and check because you just never know. But yeah, maybe I am happy with that. Maybe I just don't realize that I'm happy with that. Maybe I spent far too much time playing with the curves, so I don't really know where I'm at. You see how you can you can spend a lot of time and a lot of effort in playing with the colors and you're still not really too sure if you're at where you want to be, which is why you should always start with some kind of correction. That's if you're shooting in Cine or a, some kind of log profile. If you're shooting without a picture profile, you've got imagery that comes through and it looks saturated enough, you don't need to put on an input LUT. You don't need to correct it with a LUT. You can just start. Or if it's shot absolutely perfectly and you're happy with it, you don't even need to come into here. Not many people will tell you, but you don't always have to color correct your footage. Sometimes your footage is just correct as it is. But if you need to, you know there are a whole load of tools in here that you can work with. One part we're not going to look on is HL secondary, purely because I never use it. I think it can really overcomplicate stuff. And unless you've got footage that is really, really bad, you're never really going to need to be in here. Um, I, it just, it just, it, for me, it overcomplicates the whole process of, of color correcting and video editing in general. It just, it overcomplicates everything. What I will show you very briefly is vignette. We all know what a vignette is, do we? Okay, I'll show you. I hate the white vignette. However, I do quite like the dark vignette. Love that. This, for me, looks like a 1980s wedding album. <laughs> but this can make something look really quite nice and moody. I'm not really going to use it for this, uh, this actual project. But just to show you, if I take it all the way down to minus three so I can kind of show you the extremes. If we move the midpoint, you see how that brings in the vignette. Let's bring that all the way down so you can see. And then the roundness will affect that vignette. You see how all of a sudden we've got vertical bars here. None of this is ever supposed to be used for the extremes. But then again, if you see that around there, that almost looks like an old cine camera now. Um, but And then you can feather it. So it will feather either in to it. So you've got literally no feather. And that does look almost like an old cine film. Uh, or you can feather it out so you almost have like a, a touch of it. Uh, what I would do personally, if I uh, double click all these to take them back to center, if you did want a vignette of some sort, I'd probably bring this down a little bit. I'd take the midpoint maybe a little bit further in. The roundness I would possibly leave where it is and then feather it slightly. If I toggle on and off that vignette, you can see the difference it makes. I've not made a separate section on that just purely because I, 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 I don't really see the need for a vignette. But if you want, if you're looking for that effect, well, there it is for you. Next up, we're going to be looking at graphics and getting text in here. And with that, it will help us finish up our video. Obviously, we're going to go back in because we need to sort out the color and I need to show you that. But uh, at this point, we're going to move on to graphics. <laughs> 